Hey guys, welcome back here at Healing Journeys today. My name is Cindy Mesas. Thank you so much for watching, listening, supporting, liking, and subscribing all of our videos. Thank you so much. We truly appreciate that. Well, I'm here every single Thursday, but you can find every single day of the week a teacher. So you're not without teachers. You're not without the word through, during and throughout the whole week, seven days. Man, that's so great. Man, I just have a few announcements, but before I give the announcement, thank you so much for all of your support for our conference. You know, it was so, such a blessing. Thank you so much for those who were in person and everyone who was just, you know, live streaming with us. That was so great. Thank you so much for tuning in and also telling people about it. And it's still there. You can still, you know, uh, redirect people to it so they can still watch it. And that's so great. Well, just a few announcements. Don't forget that on Saturdays we have The Journey with Miss Julianne Hartman. And I'm, I always say the same things, but it's true that you never know what someone might say that just sticks, clinks, uh, clicks, you know, on the inside of you. And it's just, that was just the thing that you needed. So check that one out, the journey on Saturday, but also we have our Friday's guest teachers. And here's the deal. Every single teacher is different. We, we preach from the same Bible, <laughs> but every teacher is different. So maybe it's the same topic, but it comes out, you know, in a different way. And maybe you can understand it better when you hear the Friday's guest teacher or, you know, another teacher on Monday preach about, teach about that. So just check that out. Thank you so much for doing that. And hey, guys, let's begin. But first off, I know we're, we're live all over the world. <laughs> all over the world, people are tuning in, you know, checking us, and that's so great. So I see we got Anna, and Anna is from Mexico. Yeah, we got Mexico in the house. We got Doris, thank you for all the beautiful hearts. We got Julia, Kentucky. <laughs> we got Beverly from Ohio. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And everyone, maybe I don't mention your name, greet you, or say where you're from. It doesn't matter. It's not malicious. I'm high-fiving all of you, but we have to get into this word. Hey, great to see you, silly Brina. We got Britta from Germany. You see, all over the world. Well, so great that you are joining me. Listen, um, the last few sessions, I was talking about simply the word. And I showed you, you know, the importance of the word, the word uh, and your imagination. I showed you the word and Jesus. But now, just a few things. <laughs> I know it sounds like what kind of um, a topic is that? But just a few things. Because I noticed that a lot of people, they hear teachings, you know, and they hear a lot of teachings. And sometimes people can get confused or yeah, this one is saying this and that one is saying that. Uh, Cindy, you said this last time and now you're saying this. So there can be uh, a bit of a confusion or people are like, and I loved how Charles Capps showed it to us, um, the late Charles Capps. He said, sometimes you're talking about faith and you think that the person understands it, but they don't. And he just gave the example. He asked someone to stand up, you know, uh, from the crowd. And then the person had to come forward. And then he said, without, you know, looking at the person, he said, now I'm going to tell you how to put on a jacket. I can tell you it was difficult for the person just to listen, you know, how he had to put on that jacket. And that's a lot of times when we hear so much teaching what happens? We're like, how do I put it on? I don't know. So that's why I just wanted to say a few things. And before I get into the word, because you don't need me. It's not, oh, we need Cindy. No, you don't need me. You need the word because the word is truth. It's a word of power. So everything is wrapped up in the word because the word is Jesus. It's just simple like that. But here's the thing. I'm just going to show you and going to ask you certain questions. And that's to get your mind, you know, running and thinking like, okay, where am I? What am I thinking? Because there's something that people really need to understand. The way you think 
and I know you probably know it by heart. Let's get into the word. And then you know it's it's not me who said that. It's not me who wrote that down. Proverbs 23, 7. And Proverbs is just a book. I just love it. In my books, I always mention Proverbs because a proverb a day keeps sickness, negative things, and all those things away. So Proverbs 23, verse 7. And in different translation, I saw that it is different, worded differently, but I read it from the, um, let me see, the New King James Version and also the King James Version. They, they look alike. And it says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So it's so simple. But as you're thinking, the way you think, what you think, so is you. I know that's not great grammar, but you are what you think. What you think is who you really are. So uh, we can be a child of God and we can know that we are triune being. We are a speaking spirit. That's a revelation God gave to me. Not just a spirit, but a speaking spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body and we can know that, you know, and in the spirit, everything is okay. But here's the deal. Something has to be renewed and transformed. And that is our minds, our belief system, our think system. That's how I call it, our think system. So as you think, that's who you are. Now, if in the same book of Proverbs, um, if you go with me to Proverbs chapter 4, every, every part of Proverbs is just good and perfect and man. Just take a proverb a day. You know, it's so good. So if you go to Proverbs 4 and verse 23, and here it says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. Now, there's something in your soul is also your heart. So your mind, your heart, uh, the seed of emotions, affections, your imagination, your, your language, all those things are wrapped up there. That's the part that needs to be renewed. But as you think, that's who you are. And whatever is stored there in your heart, that is what will come out of your mouth. And that from it flow all the issues of life. So everything that you see in your life, I'm so sorry. But a lot of it has to do with what you think and how you think and what's in your heart. And that's just a few things we need to discuss because, man, people are getting prayed for. Uh, uh, people are confessing the word, fasting, listening to teachers every single day. Uh, you know, they got uh, faith messages on, gospel music on, thanking the Lord, praising the Lord. And it looks like nothing is happening or it looks like things are getting worse or it looks like whatever. But we have to just... Talk about these few things that as you think, just if you think here in your heart, I'm not good enough, I'm unworthy. If you think, you know, uh, a certain type of way, uh, things like we, we're talking about sickness, right? And disease, This we're talking about health and healing. If you think things like, oh, I probably will die. It looks like I've got something serious. Um, if you are like, uh, how do you say that? It's very sad in your heart and you're like very hurt and uh, wounds, you know, they are just opened. They've opened up in your heart, in your soul. There, there are scratches, you know, you're just heartbroken. Uh, if you think things uh, that are fearful things, you know, self-condemnation, guilt and shame, the way you think that's who you are. And that might be a very big reason why you don't see, you know, this is your soul, for instance, and the word comes in, but you don't see anything happen on this side. You don't see the fruits that you want to see. You don't see the harvest. Yes, now you understand it's simply the word. So, okay, I take the word, speak the word, but why isn't it happening? Because here, the thoughts, the thought life, the mindset, wherever you have set your mind, that's where it will go. So I know um, a long time ago, I just decided that this word, 
this is the truth. I, I just decided that, that no matter what, this is the truth. And even if I decided that, I still choose it every single day again. And that, that doesn't mean that I fall off the wagon. But sometimes, you know, you can get busy, things can happen. So I just choose to believe the word. Because a lot of times we are not aware of what we are thinking. And I need to address these few things. What are you thinking about? How are you thinking? Man, the many times I prayed with people, you know, when there was still the time that we could pray and lay our hands on people. That was before everything, you know, went different. And um, I was praying and a lot of times it felt like my hand. So I placed my hand. The person came up front uh, in church, for instance, and asked for prayer. And I placed my hand and it was as if my hand was, you know, something was just... Uh, pushing my hand away and I was like what's that but my hand was like this so you could not see that in the natural but in the spirit I, I felt that and it was strange and then Holy Spirit told me said that's the way they think there's something in their thinking and now I'm not saying they cannot get healed they cannot get delivered they cannot get you know free from whatever that's not what I'm talking about but I'm just talking about these few things if you don't see things manifesting. So I saw that happening. And then if I would talk to people, because as a coach, I'm also talking to people and sometimes I can just pinpoint where the problem is. And I just found out they don't want to hear the problem because they don't want to confront the problem. They don't want to, sometimes they don't like the problem. It's not that they want the problem. It's not that they don't want to get rid of the problem, but they don't want to address that. And then a lot of times I get things like, oh, no, no, but I'm in faith. Oh, no, I dealt with that. Oh, no, no, but I know what the word says. Oh, no, no, but, and it's like, hey, I'm not condemning you. I'm just pointing something out that I'm seeing. So that's the reason that I need to address these things. That's my dog. I'm so sorry about that. So what are you thinking? And how are you thinking? Where is your mind set? If there is a thought, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, you might, you know, that might be your dominant thought and that might be a, the problem why even when people pray for you or whatever, you know, has happened that you don't see the physical manifestation because you believe. And as you think in your heart, that's just who you is that I didn't write that. It's not something I came up with. I'm not saying uh, uh, you cannot get healed. I'm always starting from the, the viewpoint. You are already healed because it's already been done 2000 years ago. So there's actually no hindrance to your healing because you're already healed. The only thing is, yes, you are healed, but that dominant thought, if it's my dominant thought, my mind is set here and I want to get here, I cannot. And I know a lot of people say, no, that's not true. How dare you, Cindy? Let me say it again. I did not write the word. Uh, it's Papa God who wrote the word. He knows us. He made us. And he doesn't want us to not have our physical manifestation, but because he died a terrible death to give it to us. He wants us to have the health and the healing. He wants us more than we want it to have that physical manifestation. So it's not Papa God, you know, trying to keep you in your in your sickness and disease and illness and ailment and just see how you do it. If you don't, if you're not perfect, I cannot give it to you. I'm not talking about you being perfect. I'm talking about what you are thinking. What is your dominant thought? Now you might say, Cindy, what you're saying, it's not true. God just has to heal me. I understand, but you don't understand. He has already healed you. So that that's just the first thing. The second thing is, there's nothing that we had to do to receive that healing. It was grace. So it's a grace gift and it's through faith. Okay. But now if there is this dominant thought 
And why I say dominant thought? Because the thought is ruling your life. And let me just give an example. I was talking to this um, a man once. Uh, we, we didn't know each other. It was at this um, neighborhood party in a very posh uh, street, you know, and he was this wealthy a lawyer or something. And then we just uh, started talking and he said, you know, I'm at my third girlfriend and she is leaving me. And I thought, why is he telling me that? So I said, oh, well, that's too bad. But then I said, because I know this as you think in your heart, so is you. So I said, okay, it's the third one. There has to be something that you're thinking. And he looked at me. He said, no, 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 I'm a really nice guy. I really treat women, uh, women well. Uh, I'm rich. I have a penthouse. And he was talking about everything that he had. I said, well, that, that's great. But I said, there, there has to be something. And then, you know, we just started talking. And all of a sudden, he said, but you know, my mom, she's the number one in my life. There's no uh, woman who can um, uh, come and have the number one spot. And I said, well, there you have it. That is your thought. And a woman will feel that there's something in between. So you might be, you know, in one house together and everything is fine, but there's this something that she feels because it's your dominant thought. That's how you think. She knows she's not number one. And then if the woman is already insecure, for instance, feelings of insecurity will pop up. Does he really love me? Yeah, he's, he's really nice, but there's just this something that I cannot point my finger on, you know? And then it starts. I, I'm not saying he wasn't nice. I'm not saying he wasn't rich. I don't, I don't know why he told me that, but the thing is, it doesn't matter if you're rich, if you're poor, if you're, it doesn't matter. The way you think, that's who you are. And we really need to start thinking, what am I thinking? So one tip I always give people is write down sometimes what you're thinking. You might be shocked. <laughs> a lot of people, they think, no, I never, you know, I never think negative things. Mm, that, that, can be, that can be right. But just write down what you're thinking. Or when people cannot sleep, then they say, yeah, I cannot sleep. And it's for years. Okay. Are you lying awake at night? Yeah, but I'm not thinking about anything. Really? And then, you know, when you start talking and then they start telling what they're thinking. And I'm like, well, that's your problem. You're thinking about this and this and this and this. So how you think that's who you are. OK, I showed you simply the word and I'm, I'm just going to show you something. If it is simply the word and the way I think that's who I am, if I think the word and I'm going to go to Romans 8. If I, Cindy, think the word, I'm being spiritually minded. If I, Cindy, think the thought that is dominant, that is not according to the word, I'm carnally minded. Let me show you that. Go with me to Romans chapter 8. And these are just a few things that we're just going to talk about. And it might look that it's, hey, it's not cohesive. It's not, you know, in order or it's not the same what you're talking about. But I will show you that these things, they're tied up together. So first, Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation um, to those who are in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation for you. But listen, listen, just a few things. Listen, who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit now what is walking according to the flesh we think yeah if i you know i'm an alcoholic i'm walking according to the flesh if i kill people if i um well you name all those actions that are not great yeah that is flesh but what is also flesh my daughter said, I, I, I speak with my finger, and that's what a teacher does. So I'm, I'm trying to keep my fingers to me, to myself. So what is also according to the flesh? If I condemn myself, 
with a certain type of thought. I'm not good enough. I'm unworthy. I'm a burden to someone. Um, I cannot get myself healed. Or I'm, I'm still in fear and I cannot get the fear. You know, those type of thoughts, you are actually, that's walking in the flesh. Because that's not what Papa God told us. And also things like, if I still think, oh, I, I'm going to die. Uh, there's something really wrong with me. Um, uh, you know, I cannot do this. It's too much for me because I'm just a human. Um, it's not easy for me. It's difficult for me. I don't have the money. I don't have the strength. You know, all those type of thinking. Do you see what I'm showing you? It's negative, but it's low thinking. It's all the flesh because it all has to do with who? With us, with me, with you. So if you think fearful things, is that according to the spirit or according to the flesh? It's according to the flesh. If you think uh, things that are like, how do you say that? It's actually all unbelief. This is actually unbelief. You know, when you walk according to the flesh, it's actually that you're walking according to unbelief. And I know for some people, you're going to be like, hell, what does this have to do with my health and healing? A lot and maybe everything. So if I am not condemned, I have this right standing with the Lord, uh, with Papa God, because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yay! But am I walking according to the flesh or according to the spirit? Because walking according to the spirit is walking according to what the word tells me. And I can go to conferences. I can go to therapists. I can go to psychiatrists. I can go to the best of the best pastors and teachers and miracle workers and have them pray for me. And that's great. They can pray for me and I can get healed. But that thought is still there. So that's why I'm talking about these things. That fleshly thought is still there. And I'm here thinking, why isn't it working? Or, yeah, I'm healed, but why is it bad? Or, yay, I'm healed. You know, this miracle worker prayed for me. Everything left my body. And now, why does this thing come up all of a sudden? We need to deal with how we think. Are we thinking fleshly? Are we thinking spiritually? So are we thinking of ourselves? Oh, I'm so afraid. It's so difficult for me. I'm unworthy. I'm undeserving. I cannot do this. I'm just a human being. It's too hard for me. Or am I going to be spiritually minded? I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. Oh, you told me that I'm accepted in the beloved. So I am loved. So I am worthy. You said, you said to me, I'm your beloved. You wish above all things that I may prosper, be in health, even as my soul prospered. You only want the best for me. You told me you have not given me a spirit of fear. So this spirit of fear is not for me. It's not from me. It's not from you. So I'm going to cast it out and reject it. You see? There's a difference. One, uh, the, the flesh one, I'm really passive. One, I'm not passive because it has nothing to do with me anymore. You know, when I'm in the spirit, it has everything to do with the Lord Jesus Christ and his word, with the truth. It's his word of power. It's his word of truth. And his word revives us. His word leads us. His word guides us. His word has every single thing that we need. That's why I was talking about simply the word. But now, what are you thinking and how are you thinking? Let me show you something about being, uh, being passive, what it means uh, sometimes we think we know words, we don't. When I read this, I was like, oh, that's really true. <laughs> Let me see. Definition of the word passive. I'm, I'm on Google, so you can Google it yourself. Passive. Accepting or allowing what happens or what others do without active response or resistance. Let me say it again. Accepting or allowing what happens or what others do without active response or resistance. You see, that's actually when I walk in the flesh. Then I'm going to self-condemn myself. Then I'm going to, you know, think that I cannot get out of this problem, this trouble, this sickness. The only thing with sickness and disease, illness, and some sicknesses more than others, 
And that's only because they have gotten a certain throw, you know, oh, this is, and then you just place in a, a name. But for instance, cancer, cancer is just stubborn. It's just determined to just, you know, get in and do whatever damage it will do. It's just like, it has a tenacity like, oh, I don't care. I'm just going to try and attack. You know, cancer is just stubborn. Why? It has this throne. It's elevated because people see it as something that is deadly. Right? Have you seen that? That if I would say, oh, there's, you just have the flu. There's no reaction with people. It's like, oh, then I can take like this uh, paracetamol or Tylenol if I get a headache. Um, it's just the flu. And what I would always tell people when they tell me, oh, it's just the flu, I would say that flu came in to start, um, how do you say it, uh, um, damaging your body so something else can come. And they would, they would always look at me like, no, it's just the flu, Cindy. But if it's cancer, then it's cancer because cancer has a name. Well, for me, cancer has to bow to the name of Jesus, you see, walking according to the spirit. The word. But that's not for everyone. Not everyone thinks like that. And it's not like, oh, I'm so great. This is how I think. No, 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 no. I was there. I've always been such a very passive person. But this passivity has to go. We have to somewhere get a different mindset and say things like, no, stop. I reject this. I refuse you. I disallow you. I command you get out. Do you see? That's not being passive. And it's also not being uh, militant. No, it's just because I know it's simply the word. And I need to transform my thinking to the word. And not stay in the same mindset. And the moment I do that, I will have physical manifestations because when I reject something that's not from God, for instance, fear, I will just say, no, stop it. Fear, get out. I'll bind you. I can do that. And a lot of people go, oh, no, Cindy, there you go again. It's too much. I cannot do that. Passivity. But if I stay in the flesh realm, what manifestation will I get? Let me show you what manifestation we will get if we stay in the on a flesh realm. And then I'm going to show you something. Go with me in the same chapter, Romans 8 to verse 6. And this is just something, you know. Oh, I want, oh, I want to show you something as well. But go with me to verse 6. For to be carnally minded... Look what the man manifestation of to be carnally minded, thinking fleshly, not thinking I, I, I'm an alcoholic, I'm a murderer. I'm not talking about those things. If you do that, stop it. But, you know, it can be something like guilt, shame, uh, hurt, you know, like you're keeping that as a as like a trophy. It, it's on a throne. It, your focus is there. That's how you think. You think fearful. You think you know, in, in all those type of things. Listen, for to be carnally minded, the manifestation is death. Maybe you didn't hear me. For to be carnally minded, the manifestation is death. Death is sickness. Death is disease. Death is illness. Death is poverty. Death is death. Death is, uh, ang uh, how do you say that? Um, not willing to forgive and all those type of things. Death. That's death. But uh, to be spiritually minded, that is to be word minded, I'm a very simple and practical teacher. So this is not difficult. It's really simple. It's just one plus one is two. And I'm not saying one plus one is four because, no, it's really easy, really simple. And I, I'll give it to you really practically. Okay. So to be carnally minded is death. That's the manifestation of 
fleshly thinking. If I keep on condemning myself of things of the past, oh, what will be the manifestation? We don't have to do that. If I keep myself in the shame and the guilt because I could not get myself healed the first time, and that's why I had to take chemotherapy and radiation, who cares? I'm still alive. Well, I'm going to resist it whenever sickness comes. You know, don't stick to the guilt and the shame because that's fleshly minded, that's carnally minded, and it's just the manifestation is dead. But if I'm spiritually minded, I can say, hey, at that time, I didn't even know that I could, you know, how to get healed or that I was already healed or that I had some authority to say, no, stop it, get out, you know, whatever. And I took chemotherapy and radiation. Oh, but thank you, Papa God, that you took the shame and the guilt or the self-condemnation that I had about that. You took it and you nailed it to the cross. Now I'm being spiritually minded. And what does it equal? I'm just giving you um, a, a little example so you can see it for yourself. What is it example? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So the moment I start thinking differently, because as I think in my heart, that's who I am. That's, that's the real Cindy. The real Cindy is the spirit being. But if I don't think spiritually that I'm a speaking spirit and I'm just thinking, you know, from my own mindset, what will happen? That's who I am. So to be spiritually minded is to be word minded. So it's to be thinking according to the word. And when I think according to the word, the manifestation will be life and peace. And this word peace this is the New Testament. So it's in Greek. It's the word Irene. So if your name is Irene, it's actually peace. And it's similar to the word shalom. It has a little bit of difference, but it's similar. You know, nothing missing, nothing lacking. So that means I'm not lacking health. I'm not lacking wellness. I'm not lacking well-being because there's that life and peace. If we are sick, we need life. So what are you thinking? And I'm go just going to show you a few things. That <clears throat> um, really believing the word, I'm just going to look it up here. It means certain things. If I'm really in faith, really spiritually minded, really walking according to the spirit, because this is where some people... They miss it because they don't know and they get confused. But if I'm really spiritually minded, word minded, listen to this, then there are just a few things that I can just, you know, base that on. For instance, thanking God. Ephesians 5 verse 20, you know, thanking God always for all things in the name of Jesus. If I'm really standing in faith and believing something, I'm really thankful. I'm going to thank Papa God in advance. Not because Cindy said, not because whoever said. No, it's just in my heart. Thank you, Papa God, for uh, the money. Thank you, Papa God, for the debt freedom. Thank you, Papa God, for restoring my lungs. Thank you, Papa God, for uh, whatever it is that I've asked him. I'm going to be really thankful. Then. Uh, if you go with me to 1 Peter 1, 8, and I just love that one. I cannot get to all of them, but if you go to 1 Peter 1, 8, and I like it so much because it has words in it that is just right up my alley. <laughs> and if you know me, if you know, if you listen to me for a long time, you know what those words are. I always say the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> I love the word joy because that is actually being spiritually minded. If something happens, it's not that, you know, and it's negative. It's not that I got joy all over me like, oh, <laughs> let's just laugh. <laughs> no, if it's negative, it's negative. But what I do is I start thinking spiritually because I want the life and the peace. So I'll be like, 
<laughs> the joy of the Lord is my strength. And my daughter, she says, that's just creepy the way you laugh, mom. But doesn't matter. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So 1 Peter 1, verse 8. Whom having not seen, you love. Talking about Jesus. Though now you do not see him, yet believing. So if you want to know how you think and what you think about, if you really are believing, listen to this. Though now you do not see him, Jesus, yet believing because you believe it, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So there's just this joy. I've never seen Jesus, but there's just joy. But you're believing that you're healed, that you're already healed. Man, no one has to tell you whatever. You just know it. You will express joy. You will be this joyful person. Okay, so being thankful is one. Uh, if you want to see if you're believing. And then you got um, 1 Peter 1, 8. Oh, go with me to Romans 4, 19. That's also one that I really, really love. Because Romans 4, 19, of course, talks about Abraham. If you want to know if you're believing, this is one of the ways you can check. And, and and please, this is not the checklist, uh, the only checklist. No, this is just something that I saw and that the Lord had me written down. So that is Romans 4, verse uh, 19. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now. If I'm really believing, if I'm really thinking spiritually, if I'm really word minded, I will not consider my own body. I will not consider the boils, the scratches, the uh, the hair falling out, the eyes, the 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 deafness, the the skin, the whatever condition, nor the deadness of the situation. I will not consider the debt. I will not consider whatever. And that's when I know, oh, I'm really there. I'm really believing because I'm really spiritually minded. I'm not carnally minded. That's death. But I'm spiritually minded. That's life and peace. And how do I know that? Well, am I thankful? Am I a thankful person? Am I like, yay, thank you, Papa God. Woo! You've given me new organs. Woo! Thank you for this great liver. Yay, God. Woo, 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 woo. Am I doing that? And and. Listen, all of this is just to show you how you think what you think. You, you need to know for yourself what you're thinking. As you think in your heart, so is you. Are you carnally minded thinking or are you spiritually minded thinking? Because somewhere the word comes, boom, somewhere there has to be a manifestation. Okay, so thankful, expressing joy, you know, or not considering if you're considering it, you're thinking about it. Okay, listen to uh, Mark 11, 24, of course, Matthew 21, 22. If you believe, you will receive. <laughs> Let's go there. Let's go to Mark 11. And I know everyone knows that one by heart. Verse 24, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, Believe that you receive them and you will have them. You will just believe that you have it. Yeah, but Cindy, I can still see the pimples on your face. <laughs> you know, um, I can still see your, your blue in the face. I can still see your limping. I can still see you still cannot, you know, walk. I can still see you. I don't care what you uh, can still see. I know what I am believing. I believe I received the moment I prayed. That's what I, that's the only thing I know. I believe I received it. I believe I received my debt freedom when I was in debt, like debt, serious debt. And there was no movement at all. I was believing that I was healed. I was believing that I received my, my total healing, restoration, whatever I needed. When I did not see it, feel it, taste it. it because my mind was set. On the word, I had the word was the biggest thing. The word 
was where my mind was set. The word was where I was focused on. I was not considering this body. I was not considering what who, whoever, doctor, nurse, not doctor, best friend, bosom friend was seeing. I was not considering it. I was not considering the, the deadness of the situation. I was spiritually minded not to tap myself on the back. Oh, girl, you did so great. You can do it. No, I had to make a choice. I had to be decisive and decide it is the word. For me, it's the word. If I die, then I'll die. I, I literally said that. If I die, then I'll die. But I just know that I'm already healed. But if I believe that, then I'm going to thank for my healing already. Even if I don't feel it, see it, smell it, taste it, touch it, and symptoms are heaped up on me, I'm still going to believe the word. And I'm going to think like that. So my whole think system, I just shifted and changed that. And if I can do it, the most passive person, fearful, you know, like I didn't want to go to sleep because I never knew if something demonic would enter my, my bedroom. I had so many things wrong. I was hurt on the inside. I was so hurt from a marriage, a former marriage. There was like, I don't know how to say that. I I, I stood outside of the house with blooded uh, uh, PJ, PJs. You know, I had to uh, run out out the house. One of my children was still in the house. I was outside. Police was coming. So there were a lot. If, if something like that happens, you know, it's it, it's bad, you know? As a child, I didn't grow up with both of my parents, with both my parents loving me. No, so people think that I'm this uh, person that can do it. Yeah, but Cindy, you could do it. Yeah, but Cindy, you... I, I was passive. I made a choice because, and why did I make the choice? Simply the word, simply the word. And I made a choice. I'm going to change the way I think. I'm going to change the way my heart wants to think. And then I, I just went to John 14, 1. I didn't know I could talk to my heart. Well, once I knew, I started talking. I said, heart, hey, hey, listen to me. Because we're talking about how you think is what you believe, actually. Just a few things. And then I would just speak to my heart. I said, heart, no, 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 no. Don't be troubled. And I was troubled all the way. <laughs> I could feel it. And I would say, heart, I command you unperturbed, undisturbed. I command you at ease, chill, and relax. Well, I can tell you. I just said that so many times. And then the second part of John 14, 1, that first says, believe in God and also believe in me. You see, believing. I said, I believe in you, Papa God, and I believe in you, Jesus. It can bring tears to my eyes because I just made a decision. I said, I'm believing you, meaning I'm believing the word. I'm going to be spiritually minded and think like that. My heart sometimes just wanted, wanted to tell me it's not working. You're still sick. You cannot get out of bed. You cannot even brush your teeth. Look at you, looking like an old woman. Look at you. You know, my heart tried to persuade me. I just said, no, stop. You see, because now I'm resisting. I'm no longer passive. And I said, no, stop it. Yeah, I'm resting in the finished work of Christ. And this is now works. I'm defending what I, I know I have. I'm defending the word. I'm spiritually minded because I'm defending the life and the peace that is mine. I don't want the death. Get your death out of here. So I'm not going to be carnally minded and think like, oh, I'm just Cindy and I cannot. No, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he who is in me than he was in the world. Uh, now I'm going to take the scriptures that I've heard for so long, that I saw for so long. I'm going to take them. I'm going to believe them. And that's the way we're going to think. Mind, do you hear me? My mind. I, I was talking to my mind. I said, thoughts, you're going to change. Yes, you are. And every single time my imagination or my thoughts want to bring up a negative scenario, a negative scene, a negative thing. I said, hey, <laughs> and I'm really like that. I said, no, just redirect yourself. We can do that. Yes, we can. Okay, I'm looking. I don't know if I can get to everything, the few things that I want to talk about. But listen, um, people are thinking, can you live like that, Cindy? Yes, we can. <laughs> of course we can. Otherwise, why would Jesus show it to us? 
why would he have it written down? Sometimes I'm like, why are people fighting the word? He has it written down and we are fighting not to do it, not to do it like that. I, I, I'm going to do it like he told me. I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to be spiritually minded, not to tap myself on the back, but I want that life in peace. I don't want the death. So here's the deal. We know we have an enemy, right? John 10, 10, that he comes except to steal, kill, and destroy. So it is written down for us. We see that in Matthew 4, 4, we see that Jesus, you know, he was tempted by the devil. So we know the devil is our enemy. Well, sickness is your enemy. Disease is your enemy. Illness is your enemy. Poverty is your enemy. Lack is your enemy. All those things that is not from God. Fear, it's your enemy. I'm so sorry, but it's your enemy. Panic attacks, they're your enemy. Depression, it's your enemy. Oppression, what? Manic, uh, being uh, uh, bipolar. Do you know it's, it's not for you? It's an enemy. So let me paint this picture. Because a lot of times we just have to make it very practical and simple. If you would be in your house and you have, you know, uh, a weapon next to you, and you're seated in your house, and all of a sudden the door flungs open, boom, your back door flungs open, and there is a burglar. And this burglar comes in and says, I want all your money and I want everything that's in the house, all your gold and your silver. You got, you know, the weapon right here. Wouldn't you use it? Or would you be so passive and say, so let's say this is the weapon. <laughs> Oh, I got the weapon, but man, the burglar's already in the house. Better live with the burglar. Yeah. Come on in. I'm just, I'm just a human being. Can I do anything against you? Um, yeah, the room of my uh only uh daughter, it's upstairs to the left. Yeah, and yeah, just take all the money and then uh yeah, that's it. And then he comes in every single week and then he brings some of his friends and, you know, he brings his suitcases and he just starts living in your house, you know, and then he says, yeah, bring me some beer. Oh, I like the way you make the coffee and you still have that weapon right here. Wouldn't you use the weapon or would you let it come that far? You would use the weapon, right? Because you have that weapon. You could resist and say, no, I don't allow you. Get back. Go away. Wouldn't you do that? Because you got a weapon. Well, I've just given you a weapon of weapons. The way you think that's who you are. And now you don't even have to think like, oh, well, what, what do I have to think right now? Because I don't know what to think. I always thought like this, that I wasn't worthy. You got the word so you can transform and change your thinking and become spiritually minded and have life and peace and you will have the manifestation. And do you know something will happen on the inside of you? You will become from being very passive. You will not become aggressive. No, you will become. How do you say that? You will have a tenacity. You'll be determined that no cancer. I'm not allowing you in this body. No alopecia. You're not touching this hair. No cells. You're going to do as I say. I command you whole and healthy. You will all of a sudden start to defend what is already yours because now you're walking in the spirit. You're walking and uh, being spiritually minded, being word minded. And all of a sudden, something on the inside is starting to change and you're not allowed anymore that no burglar can come into your house and just do whatever he wants to while you have that weapon with you you got a device right here that's your mouth death and life are in the power of your tongue so if your heart is believing is filled in abundance with that word because confessing the word is just you on a how do you say building up yourself in faith and you can also do that by speaking in tongues if you can speak in tongues if you can't get into the word and and check out concerning your situation, what is there. Change, transform, renew your mind to the word. Because as you think in your heart, that's who you are. And you can do that. You can talk to your heart. Say, heart, stop it. Unbelief, stop it. Get out. I bind you. Move. Fear, move. You can do that. But people are like, oh, no, that's works. 
I cannot do that. It's too hard for me. It's too difficult for me. Yeah, because you're watching everything from the viewpoint of you. But I'm saying, check it from the viewpoint of the throne. That's from up, down. Don't look at yourself from the floor up. Because, hey, I'm also just a human being, just a person. What is different? I'm just spiritually minded. And I just have to make that choice. If something bad happens, I have to make that choice. Am I going to think the way the world thinks? Oh, yeah, but Cindy, you don't understand. No, I, I will not understand. I just understand the word. When the devil tries to tell me stuff, oh, you know, this and this and this. I'm not listening because I am a child of God and I hear his voice. You see, I'm spiritually minded. I'm redirecting my focus from whatever the devil tries to tell me. And then I go and say, well, what do you have to tell me? And I'm just getting into the word. Well, you bless me, your righteous with favor. I'm surrounded as with a shield. Oh, thank you. I'm so accepted in the beloved. Oh, thank you so much that you uh, uh, that you've sealed me, you know. Oh, thank you so much. And I'm just going. Thank you for that spirit of wisdom and that spirit of revelation and knowledge of him. That the eyes of my understanding are being enlightened right now. I command light shine in my eyes. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. So Satan, you shut up in the name of Jesus. I bind you. Get out. Leave. Now, is that because I'm militant? Is that because I think I know it all? Is that? No, it's just because as I think in my heart, that's who I am. I got thoughts like every single one of you, every one of us, you know, we all think things and it can be negative or it can be positive. If I see that it's negative, I will get into that word just a little bit more to get it on the inside of me. And I will start talking to my heart, talking to my mind, and I, I will redirect my thoughts, redirect them until I don't have to redirect them anymore. And all of this is just being spiritually minded, walking in the spirit. And now, Romans 8, 1, I can go to Romans 8, 2, because for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So now I have this law working on the inside of me. Let me say it again. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So now I have the law of the spirit of life not of death, working on the inside of me, what will be my manifestation? Life, just simply life. And these are just a few things that I just wanted to point out. It might not be for everyone, but I do believe it's for everyone because everyone thinks, what are you thinking about? How would you deal with a burglar in your house? Um. Oh yeah. If you go to Ephesians 4, 27, and it says, don't give the devil any foot. Don't give him opportunity. Why would you give him opportunity in your mind, in your thinking, when you know, as I think in my heart, so am I. <laughs> Out of my heart flow all the issues of life. Why would I give him the opportunity when I know, John 10, 10, that, hey, he comes except to still steal, kill, and destroy. Why would I give him opportunity to steal, to kill, or to destroy? And even, you know, if that burglar is still in the house, I will use the weapon. My mouth. I can speak against it, say, no, stop that. Why? Because now my think system has transformed and changed. I'm spiritually minded. So now I'm thinking differently, and I will speak differently. No, I don't allow you cancer. Get out. I commend every cancer cell. You die. That's not works. It's not works. You know, the thing that will happen when you change the way you think in your heart to the word, become spiritually minded and believing, I gave you like a checklist. It's not the checklist. It's just something that I saw that you can check yourself with. Where am I? Because it's according to our faith. Um, what happens is all of a sudden 
I will change from thinking that I cannot get out of it. It's too difficult for me. It's too hard for me. I cannot do it. I'm unworthy. I'm not deserving. I'm, you know, all the low, 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 low thinking. All of a sudden, I will, I'm like, hey, I'm fed up with this thing. I'm not the sick. I am already healed. How dare you talk to me, sickness? I'm going to talk to you. All of a sudden, I'm so fed up. I start to reject. I start to disallow what Papa never gave me. I start to stop fear and say, hey, stop talking to me. I'm his sheep. I hear his voice. What did you tell me? Oh, God is not giving me a spirit of fear. Huh? But a spirit of power, love and of a sound mind. Well, I'm going to use that spirit of power and I'm going to say no to that spirit of fear. No to that thought of fear in the name of Jesus. I'm not under you. I'm above you. Man, you will start shifting, changing the way you're speaking because you're shifting and changing the way you're thinking to the spiritually word-minded type of thoughts. Let me leave you with this. And that's, on, uh, if you go with me to Philippians 4, 8, that helped me tremendously. Philippians 4, 8. And you see, I I'm talking about the way you think. And a lot of times we don't clean up, clean out what we are thinking. Listen to this. It helped me a lot. Um, this is Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, we are the brethren. Think. This is what we have to think about. Think of things uh, that are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, of uh, good report. If there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Again, the God of Irene, you know, the God of Shalom will be with you. Now, every single thing here, uh, just, pure, good report, lovely, praiseworthy, virtuous, true. Uh, every single translation has different wording. But listen, it talks about the word. This is the word. The word is true. The word is good report. If you want good report, you just get it from the word. If you want to hear the truth, you go into the word. Noble things, the word. And adjust things, the word. It's talking about the word. Now, we so happen to have the measure of faith. We have the word with us. You can change the way you think. You can do that. And with it, when you change the way you think, when you change it from being carnally minded, manifestations of death, to be spiritually minded, manifestations of life and peace. And what will happen? You will start shifting from being passive, non-resistance, just accepting, oh, I'm just the sick, I'm just so poor, I cannot, you know, you will be starting taking your authority. When you take the authority, now the greater one can stand up on the inside of you and he can start defending you because how can he ever defend us if we don't open up our mouth? Okay, let me leave it at this. Um, these are just a few things that I'm just talking about. And actually, this is for everyone. So can you live like this? Thinking the word? Yes, we can. Um, why would you let a burglar in your house and just let him live there and do whatever he wants to when you have the weapon? When you're the one in authority? When you're the one on the throne? I'm just giving you these questions. What are you thinking? Are you thinking fearful things? Are you thinking that you cannot do it? That's too hard for you? That uh, you can never get out of this sickness? Cancer is too much. Alopecia is too much. Uh, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis is too much. Uh, being depressive is too much. Are you thinking like that? Are you thinking low, low, low thinking? Um, or are you thinking things like, oh, spiritually minded. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. No one loves me. Well, I feel hurt, but hey, I'm accepted in the beloved. You love me. You're well pleased with me. I'm your beloved. Spiritually minded. You know, are you believing? But really believing. I'm not talking about, you don't have to soothe me. It's not my life. It's not my body. It's, it's I have to do me. 
you do you, I have to do me. So you don't have to suit me with a great answer, you know, and write it in the chat section. Where are you? Are you believing? Are you considering your own body and the deadness of the situation? Or are you not considering your own body already dead, you know, nor the deadness of the situation? Are you a thankful person? You know, are you really believing? Are you really thinking that you're already healed? Do you understand that you're already healed? You know, I'm just giving you stuff so you can start thinking because sometimes people, they don't think for themselves. They, and they don't even know what they think. Start checking. Where am I? Are you expressing joy? Still, I, I see so many grumpy Christians. We should be very joyful. But okay, are you expressing joy? Are you talking to your heart, saying heart, just be unperturbed, undisturbed? You know, I'm just giving you these things to get you moving and get to get you out of your comfort zone. I see my time is up, but this really needs to get on the inside of you. We need to start thinking again and then start thinking the word instead of your past. Instead of the hurt, instead of I'm, I'm not belittling your hurt or your past or the sickness or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. Not at all. What are you thinking? Just a few things. Um, <laughs> thank you, everyone. I, I, I'm so sorry. I, I, I will not get to um, uh, questions or, you know, praying for people. But the thing is, please. Just listen to this again and write things down. Write the questions down. Check it out for yourself. And next week, we're going to talk more about this. So I cannot get to uh, prayer. But here on the ticker, this is 24-7, uh, seven, seven days a week. You can get prayer. Please don't think, oh, but Cindy, she stopped her medication. And Cindy just said, ah. Uh, I bind you, spirit of death, go. So I have to do that as well. If your faith is not there, it's according to our faith. If, it, if you're not there, please just let someone pray with you. It's okay. You know, I took chemotherapy and radiation. You know, I had people pray for me at first because I didn't know. So it doesn't matter. It's okay. Get the agreement prayer. Um, so please do that. If you want to donate to the healing journeys today you can oh what did i do <laughs> but thank you so much for uh watching i like that jen that is just something i really want to our past that does not define us and i really really like that because it doesn't <laughs> the word defines us so i left you with philippians uh 4 8 you check that out for yourself. You go over the scriptures that I use. You check out what they say. So don't take my word for it. You go into the word yourself. And for every single one of you who thinks that, you know, you're not going to make it, I'm going to speak in the name of Jesus. I speak life over you. I speak life and peace over you in the name of Jesus. Every single person of you who thinks low, 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 I speak your thoughts are just lifted up and you will think so highly of yourself because you think highly of the word in the name of Jesus. I commend life in your bones. I commend life in your cells. I commend life in your blood. I commend life in your veins. I commend life in your muscles. I commend life in your heart. I commend life in your liver, your kidney, every single organ. I speak life in your joints and your marrow in Jesus' name. I speak life in every part of your body that was damaged. I commend it and I repaired with life right now. I commend the life just shoots right through your body in the name of Jesus. And I know there will be so many testimonies of life in the name of Jesus. Well, everyone going to see you next on a Thursday, same time, same place. Your healing journeys today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye guys. Thank you. Holy spirit. For